Well, welcome to the Globus World pre-conference session. Uh, my name is Susan Tussey. I'm responsible for communications and outreach. And just to give you an idea of today's session, we're going to have three different separate sessions with them approximately lasting for one hour. Given that it's quite a long webinar, what we're going to do in between the sessions, though, is have a break. So you'll have a chance to just take a break between um, the, the three different sessions. Also want to mention, um, in terms of a little housekeeping tip, please feel free to enter any questions that you have in our chat. We do have folks here who are going to be responding to the chat. And also at the end of each session, we'll be uh, responding as well. So please feel free to answer or uh, put any of your questions in the chat so that we can answer those for you. So the first session this morning will be Greg Naraki, our Director of Subscriber Engagements, and he's going to give you an introduction to Globus for researchers and new users. That's going to be followed by a session on Globus for System Administrators and then a session on data fairness. But for now, let's get started and I'll turn it over to Greg. Thank you, Susan. Let me go ahead and share my screen. So uh, that should work and, and do the customary rearranging of the apps and the windows. Okay. So yeah, so I am going to do, um, I think I've got to acknowledge some things here. Uh, okay, there we go. I think I'm good. Um, yeah, so I am going to give an introduction to Globus for researchers and new users. I've got some slides. We'll go through them. And then I'll jump in and out of some live demos because, um, you know, what could go wrong, right? So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and get started here. So uh, what is Globus? We're a, we're a non-for-profit service developed and operated by the University of Chicago. The Globus staff members are University of Chicago employees. Um, and our mission is to increase the efficiency and effectiveness of researchers engaged in data-driven science and scholarship through sustainable software. So what does it take to be able to create sustainable software? So you need professional software developers. Um, yeah, we're researchers, but we've got uh, people in our, in our uh, organization that have uh, experience in, in the software industry and, and business operations. Um, so we're kind of a, a multi-talented group within, uh, within Globus. And we've got a Globus Labs group that's really kind of focused on uh, more research-heavy uh, grant work as well. So we've got a freemium sustainability model and basic capabilities, um, as many of you are aware, if you use Globus, uh, they're available free of charge. You're free to download Globus and, and use Globus if you're engaged in not-for-profit research. You can download Globus Connect Server and Globus Connect Personal. You can um, uh, create a Globus account using your institutional identities. We'll show all this as we go in through our demos. Subscriptions enable additional features for both the researcher and the system administrator. And um, I've got a good kind of uh, uh, overview of that uh, at the end of this presentation as we, as we jump into some of our subscription features. And our subscription pricing model is based on fairness and equity. Uh, you know, a, a, a very large research institution shouldn't pay the same as a small liberal arts college. And we certainly honor that with our, with our pricing model. And you can uh, find more about that on our website, of course. So a lot of our development was and still is to some extent uh, funded by, by grants, um, DOE grants, uh, NSF grants, uh, and, and then uh, certainly a little bit of corporate sponsorship. Our, our services hosted in AWS. So um, you know, thanks to all our, our, our original sponsors and those that, that help us out with the development. But our operations are funded by our subscriber base. And this allows us to be truly sustainable. Right? We don't have to worry about grants drying up. We can uh, you know, rely on our sponsors um, that, that come and, and or I'm sorry, our subscribers that come and subscribe to, to Globus to, to keep, uh, keep the lights on and keep things running. So this is just a small section of our subscribers. And uh, thanks to all of you. If your logo is not pictured here, um, maybe it will be the next time I, I tend to rotate them out. So I can show all sorts of neat stats about Globus, all our registered users, the endpoints that are out there with data on them, the amount of data per day. Um, yeah, so, so we've got lots of stats out there on Globus and all, we're very proud of that. But um, I just noticed this morning, um, we have uh, passed uh, 2.5 exabytes of total data transfer. 
So um, as for in, in the data transfer game, we're certainly well-versed and well-experienced. Okay, so uh, if I was to sum up Globus in, in uh, one sentence, I guess it's kind of a run-on sentence, I'd say Globus is a data management platform that delivers fast and reliable data transfer, collaboration and automation services directly from your own storage systems via software as a service using existing identities. So I'll break a couple of these things down and then uh, we'll make Globus seem a, a lot less complicated than my uh, verbose uh, sentence here. So using existing identities, we're not an identity provider. You use your existing institutional identities, Google identities, and I'll talk a little bit about that when I log in, you'll see that happen. Um, via software as a service, yes, we'll demonstrate the web browser for a lot of what we do today, but it really is platform as a service. There's lots of ways to interact with the Globus service come through command line interfaces. We even expose our API set and have a really nice SDK that wraps that. So lots of ways to interact with our various services. And uh, regarding your own storage system, your own storage can mean lots of different things. Um, you know, you could have uh, your research computing cluster, even your, your own personal desktop or laptop or workstation. Um, you know, you can, uh, there could be storage on, on, on instruments out there, cloud storage. Uh, so we take all this, this disparate storage and we unify it and make it look like one thing. And that one thing we call a Globus collection. And when I dive in a little bit deeper, we'll discuss collections and points and, and all that good stuff. Lastly, kind of speaking of storage, um, we've got connectors to support lots of uh, diverse systems out there. We've got uh, connectors for just about all the major cloud storage providers, um, tape archives, our S3 connector can be used by um, any storage that, that has a, a true S3 interface. So um, we abstract just about any type of storage out there with our, with our premium connectors. Okay, so let's start with our first demo. I've, I've talked a lot and I've made Globus seem very complex and I'm gonna now make it seem very simple. So we go to Globus here and this is our, our website and I'll resize my screen as appropriate. And if I click the login button, it take, takes me to app.globus.org and it wants me to log in to authenticate to Globus Auth to authenticate to the web, with the web interface. Um, I could do that with a GitHub identity, a Google identity, I could do that with uh, my ORCID. Um, we even have our own lightweight identity provider called Globus ID if you really um, don't have an identity out there. But also we've got about 1800 or so identity providers that have been federated through InCommon, CI Logon, Edugain uh, that appear in this Globus login pulldown. In fact, I am a, a staff member, as I mentioned, at the University of Chicago. So if I type in Chicago here, we'll get the University of Chicago. I'm going to click on that and click continue, and it's going to take me out to the University of Chicago um, uh, IDP here. So I've got to uh, get my username and password in here, and I'm using my password manager. And I go ahead, click sign in, and you notice we honor multi-factor authentication. And this is the time I'm very thankful that I did not leave my phone in the car. And I click on verify and I get an MFA acknowledgement to my phone, or I should any minute now. And I'm gonna input that number, hit verify. And now I'm authenticated with the University of Chicago identity provider into the Globus web interface. There we go. So when I come into the web interface, I see this single panel view of, of Globus and um, that's, that's great, but I always think of Globus, um, you know, you're transferring between two collections. Transfers always happen between two collections. So I like to click that so I can see both my collections. Um, if I go in, I'm just gonna quickly go into the settings menu here and notice I logged in with my UChicago identity, but I've got all sorts of other identities here linked in. And uh, that helps me when I go to collections from other institutions that I may be like, I'm dual appointed at Argonne National Laboratory, I have an access identity, so I can use um, those resources. This happens to be a Google identity. I can link those all in. So by logging into my UChicago identity, I'm now bringing with it all those other identities that I, that I often use. So let's go back to the file manager to pane view here. And we're gonna do a quick transfer, quick transfer demo. And this is something you can do because um, we have, if you type in uh, tutorial collection, 
uh, tutorial collection number one. If you just start typing, oh boy, I can someday I'll learn to type. In fact, I'll just save everybody the pain here. You'll notice I use these quite often. If I click on Globus Tutorial Collection number one, um, which you can do, we've got uh, those are set up for, for any anybody to use. Uh, if you go up one folder here to the share data, share go data directory, there's a couple of small text files there. Now, I'll also use Globus Tutorial Collection number two, and this is a destination collection. So I can take a folder here or, I, or a file. If I want to transfer file number two, file two dot text here from tutorial collection one to tutorial collection two, I'm going to select that, hit start, away it goes. I'll go into a lot of what uh, these other things that are happening that you see happening here um, as we dig into the demo. But if I refresh that, there we go. The file arrived, it's been transferred. So Globus is really simple and easy to use. Okay, so we're going to drop out of here and we'll do a, we'll come back and do uh, some more demos later and dig into um, uh, what else is going on in the web app as well. So what what did we just see here? We saw a shared data transfer, right? Um, and I'll talk a little bit about the whole no babysit required. So that transfer was very quick and it went uh, I could you know ma maintain my login. But if you let's say you had a file that was um, you know a, a, a petabyte, uh, it's going to take a long time to transfer regardless of your network. You don't have to worry about it. Globus is going to do the babysitting. You can log in and log out of the web interface. Um, you saw when that uh, that indication came up that there was a live transfer. I'll show you how to kind of monitor those transfers later. But you don't have to stay logged in. You can log in and log out. So it's a, a, a fire and forget method of file transfer and synchronization. So when we logged in as a user, we logged into the multi-tenant Globus service, and the Globus service is what uh, uh, talks to the Globus collections. And Globus collections are built on endpoints. Again, I'll talk about a little bit about this in a, in, a, in a minute. And Globus transfers those files reliably and securely, reliably in the sense that you saw it was fire and, fire and forget, reliably in the sense that it uses grid FTP, very fast transfer mechanism. If the um, it's got automated resolution of transient errors, if the network glitches, we just back off and we come back, um, it, which is which is really handy. It's not like SCP or or HTTPS where if you're doing those transfers and your network goes away, game over. You got to restart the transfer. We do check summing, so what you see is what you get, and um, we will then send you uh, optional notifications. So the notification to tell you your file is transferred successfully. Uh, this is great if you've got a long transfer going on and you don't want to babysit it, you're going to get an email saying that transfer succeeded. As you saw, we've got support for on-premise and, and cloud storage systems, and I'll show you a little bit about what those collections look like as we dive in a little bit deeper here. We also have the ability to do um, HTTPS transfers. Again, you're not going to get the, the grid FTP goodness and the reliability of that. But if there is a situation where there is no uh, collection or endpoint that you could use, um, uh, you could use HTTPS transfers to, to retrieve that data as well. So we've got you covered. So I'm um, talking a little bit about uh, endpoint collections in Globus Connect. So Globus Connect is a piece of software and it's installed to instantiate an endpoint and it's freely available. Uh, you can download it from our website. And once you install an endpoint, you can host collections on top of that. And collections abstract storage. And this is really what the user interacts with. The user sees those collections. So in the web browser, we're seeing collections. There's two types of uh, collections. And um, as we dive into our demos, we'll see this. There's mapped collections. And those are accessed by a user that has a local account on the storage system. Um, uh, in, in this demo, it wasn't so obvious because those are uh, those are generally available collections. But then guest collections, then guest collections are collections that use um, an existing map collections. And you can build on that and allow the ability of a user to share access to your data on that collection. One of my last demos is showing you a sharing demo. So um, we'll show you all about guest collections. So Globus Connect, um, speaking of Globus Connect, there's two flavors of Globus Connect. Globus Connect Server which is a multi, which is for designed for multi-user Linux systems. And this is kind of where the mapped collection comes in, right? You're mapped to you as a local user. You see only your file system. 
Um, you may have, uh, there may be different storage types on there. This is where our premium connector types uh, fit in. It's installed by a system administrator. Most of you users out there are certainly not going to have to worry about this, but Lev in his next demonstration is going to show you Globus Connect Server. So you admins all stay tuned. Um, and and uh, as I mentioned, you can mul uh, map multiple collections and, and you're seeing your own home directory structure. You're not seeing the directories of others when you go to your own map collection. There's also Globus Connect Personal, um, and that's for personal laptops, uh, workstations. It's a single user model, and it's installed by you as the user. And I am going to actually do a demo install of Globus Connect Personal and show you how easy it is. And then you wind up with your single mapped collection that, that abstracts the storage on your, on your local uh, laptop or workstation. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's do a Globus Connect personal install and I'll show you how easy it is. So if we go back to our collections menu here, you'll notice at the top, it says get Globus Connect personal. If I click on that, um, I can download it. I'm on a Mac operating system right now. I can download it. I can go to other operating systems and download that. Um, I've got it on my machine already, so I'm not gonna bother with the download, but I'm gonna go ahead and click Click the application and get it started. And the first time you uh, get that application up and running, it looks to see if you've got any uh, authentication or you know if you've, if you've been there before. Uh, it'll it'll uh, if you already have it running, it'll it'll it will come up and, and show you uh, uh, just kind of get it running in the background. So uh, this is what you see the first time you you uh, run that application, and it's going to ask me to log in. I've already logged into Globus. If I wasn't, it would ask me to bring up the app.globus.org page and, and, and allow me, want me to log in. But right now it's asking me for consents. It's saying, hey, um, a Globus Connect personal wants to use your, uh, your, um, your identity that you've logged into Globus to do the set of things. And of course I say, that's fine. I'm gonna click allow. And now my login is successful. And, um, I can close, the, close this window and finish. So there we go. So there we go. So um, then it comes up to the Globus Connect personal setup uh, window here. I'm going to give it a collection name. You can, uh, if you've got multiple identities linked in, you can use the um, specify which identity you want this to be under. I'll just do it under my primary identity. I'll give it a collection name. Um, Greg, this is my MacBook. So I'm going to call it Greg's MacBook. Um, and there we go. I can give it a description if I want to find it there. This um, a high assurance subscription is something I'll talk about at the end. If you don't aren't sure that you have a high assurance subscription, if your endpoint, uh, if your uh, your Globus Connect personal isn't subscribed to a subscription, don't click this. If you do, it's going to um, want uh, a couple other things to happen, and the only way to undo it is actually uh, delete that delete that collection and start all over. So unless you know what you're doing, don't click the high assurance. So there we go. So let's hit save. And we should be up and running. So um, you'll notice here, I've got my Globus icon up and running in the uh, task manager here. Oh, I know what happened. It uh, popped up my, my other window there. Okay, so um, I've got Globus Connect Personal up and running here. I get the window here saying the successful setup. I'm gonna exit that. And I'm gonna go back to the file manager. And I'm gonna look in the collections here. And I'm going to click on, or I'm going to say, click, click on my my collections, and I should see my MacBook there. Um, I could certainly search on it as well, but it's right there in my collections. If I click on that, um, it's going to go to uh, my Globus Connect personal installation that I just installed right here on my MacBook, and this is my entire directory structure on my Mac. So you say, well, I, you know, I don't want to see uh, my entire directory structure. I, I just want to kind of tie that down. You can do that with Globus Connect Personal. Um, if I click on the application here and click Preferences, it's going to look a little bit different in Windows and uh, Linux, but on the Mac, this is the way it looks. Um, if it, if this, you want to delete this application, this is where you do it. But I can control the access uh, that, that uh, GCP has to my uh, my directory structure. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add, I've got a directory here um, that I like to use. Uh, it is my Globus endpoint directory. And I'm going to set that. I'm going to set it for writability because I may want to be able to push files back and forth myself. 
and I am going to click this and I'm going to delete the access to the entire directory. And there we go. So now if I refresh, if I refresh this, I should see my Globus endpoint directory and only a select set of files that I want to see. So great. So here we go. So I've got these files on my laptop and I actually want to transfer them up to, um, I want to use my, my research computing cluster at the University of Chicago. Common use case here, right? Uh, sending data from your laptop up to um, your RCC or your institutional storage. And if I type um, ah, another, another interesting demo here, if I click on bookmarks, you have the ability to um, bookmark your endpoints. So just like in a web browser, for those collections that you um, may not use often enough and can't remember what they're named or where they are, or if you just are a poor typist like me and don't want to have to worry about uh, having to type it in, you can bookmark those collections. So this is my home directory structure on Midway, which is our research computing cluster uh, at the University of Chicago. And I'm eventually gonna share these slides out. So in my slide share directory, um, I've got a directory here called uh, Globus World 2024. I am going to select these two files and I am going to transfer them. And I click start. And away it goes. So the files are now um, being transferred from my laptop to the research computing cluster um, in Hyde Park. I'm actually sitting in Chicago, but I'm in downtown Chicago, not down in Hyde Park. So here's the remote control, right? Um, I can look at all these different collections in, in different places from um, another location. You'll notice here that um, there's a transfer request submitted and you saw, may have seen the activity monitor come in. If I want to see what happened with those, I can jump into the activity monitor. Um, here's the, the, the transfer I just did. I can dig in that a little bit more. I can see that the task succe succeeded. I can look at the event log and I can see uh, when it started, when it completed. I can see if there's any fault events, that's an inter errors that happen. So I can dig into, um, as well as the successful transfers, the two files that transferred. So it gives you a really nice control, um, seeing what's happened in the past and what's currently happening uh, as well. Okay, so we go back to the file manager here. I'm gonna refresh that. And indeed, I should have those um, two files pushed up. Okay, excellent. So that's a demo of the installation of Globus Connect Personal. Um, how to install it, how to delete it, how to uh, manipulate it. Uh, obviously, our, our doc site is, is excellent as well for um, more information on, on how to do all that. Um, let's see. Oh, one important thing I wanted to bring up is uh, about one, maybe once every other month, we'll get a support ticket where somebody comes into Globus and they install Globus Connect Personal and then they see all their files uh, in the web browser. And those files are actually on your laptop. They're not on Globus. Files don't transit through Globus. We don't see your files. We don't see your, um, you know, we we don't we don't download your files at all. And they think, oh no, uh, Globus has just downloaded my files. And they select all their files and they proceed to delete it, thinking they're deleting it out of our service. They are not. They are deleting it off their laptop. So don't do that. Uh, don't uh, take the, uh, you know, we don't see your files that's actually on your laptop. So anything you do here, you're actually doing on your laptop. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, so a quick review um, of Globus and, and what's going on here. So the data channel, so when you log in as a user, you're logging into the Globus services. The Globus services run a control channel to talk to the various endpoints, the various collections. And then data moves be directly between those collections. It doesn't move through the Globus services. We don't see your data. Um, we see file and path name because we need to know those to, to know that the, the files have successfully transited. Um, but we don't see the actual data. As I mentioned, you're logged, you're, what you're seeing in the web browser is actually on the storage system. So anything you do in our web interface, you're actually doing on the storage system. Okay, um, I kind of touched on this before, but um, with Globus data, data Movement, there's two ways to accomplish that. And I'll show you um, as we dive a little bit deeper into the web browser, what's um, and, and how to use these various trans transfer mechanisms. But Globus Transfer, when I hit that start button, that uses Grid FTP, very fast, reliable protocol. 
Um, and it's like a remote control for your data, right? You can remotely send data between two endpoints. Um, and we also have the ability to use, um, set up your endpoints for HTTPS transfers. And that's so, um, let's say uh, you have a user that just can't, for, for institutional reasons, set up a, an endpoint or a collection of their own. You can set your endpoint up for HTTPS downloads. It is a subscription service. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that when I talk about subscriptions. Um, and it's it's also a direct download. It's a it's a it's a true download. It comes down to the machine doing the pulling where you're running running the web browser. This is not a remote control for your data. It's direct to uh, direct to laptop, direct to workstation. The also um, the other thing is because it's not as reliable, um, it's likely to bring great sadness for large files. If you um, need to transfer a petabyte of data, HTTPS is probably the not not the right way to do it. And as I mentioned, it's fast, reliable, and secure. Um, you know, here's a, a transfer that happened in a very optimized network. Um, one of the questions I always get is, um, you know, when when people are new to Globus, is well, how fast is Globus? And my my uh, snide answer is, well, you're kind of asking me the how much does a car question, car cost question, um, and that's it depends, right? Um, Globus is only as good as its weakest link. Um, we can't do uh, amazing things with the, the network um, and, and certainly the machines that are doing the, the, the transferring, the amount of workload on there, even file types. If you've got large collections of small files, um, that's just that, that a large, what do we call it? The large collections of small files problem. It's just going to take a while to do those transfers. Um, but however, in cases where you don't have a, a secure, or a, a, sorry, a fast network, where it's taking a while to do those transfers, with the fire and forget mechanism of Globus, you don't have to worry about that, right? You can, you can. Who cares how long it takes if you've got a bad network? Um, you can kind of log out and log back in to see how those transfers go. So Grid FTP's got you covered um, all the way around. Okay, so we're gonna jump back into the web uh, interface and we're gonna do um, a little bit deeper tour of the interface and see what's going on and um, do another common use case. And that is a transfer between institutional storage and um, cyber infrastructure. So um, I do have an allocation on access and if I use the, if I go to the exceed, uh, I'm sorry, the access um, uh, Anvil endpoint there at Purdue, um, I've got some files there. And if I want to transfer those between um, that, uh, you know, that those, that collection, my home collection, real easy to do that. Now, um, you'll notice it, it didn't ask me to log in here, and it didn't ask me to log in because my um, I've got all those um, all those identities linked in here. And if it was, however, if it was like the first time I've logged in, or I think uh, it expires every seven days, I'm, I'm not sure what access has, it'll ask me to re-authenticate. So it would have come back here and said, okay, great, I know you want to go here, but please authenticate with your, your um, access credentials and we'll allow you in to see your endpoint. Same with Midway, um, th that expires as well here, but I'm often in these and um, for demo purposes, uh, you don't really need to see me log in again. So um, let's kind of take a quick tour of the web interface here. And, um, you know, if, as I mentioned, things that you do on the interface are things that happen on the storage. So if I wanted to delete that one meg file off of uh, Anvil, I could click on that and I could go here to this menu. It may be collapsed here, but I can bring that back. Uh, delete selected. I could create folders. I could rename folders. Um, I'll go through some of these other options later. I'm going to go ahead and delete that and get a message that it wants. Does it want you to delete? Yes. And if I refresh that, that file is now gone. Um, I can adjust my view here. Uh, let's say I wanted to see uh, files of certain types, or uh, you know, I can I can adjust the the whole view here. I can filter. So let's say I just wanted to see that JPEG file. If I did a JPG here, it's going to just going to show me that one file. So it's a way to kind of filter your views. If you've got a collection with a ton of files, you can really kind of um, narrow that down. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, what else do I want to show you here? You can certainly navigate through the directory structure. You saw me do that when I was 
um, over here at Midway. In fact, I'm going to come up to the root directory level of Midway and do a, do a transfer here. So I want to transfer. Oh, I don't want to put that in my slide share. I'm going to put this in my uh, home directory in Midway. So if I want to do a transfer of this 10 gig file, and I want to make sure it's not over. Oh, yeah, it is over there. So let me go here, and I'm going to delete it. Ah, in this case, I'm going to right-click on it. And if you right-click on it, um, you can certainly uh, do some file manipulation there as well. And let's delete that. And if we refresh, um, that file should be gone. Dismiss those, refresh, and indeed that 10 gig file as soon as Midway must be busy busy today. Oh, maybe it's not, what did I do? Did I not? Oh, I think I, sorry, maybe it was the one gig file I deleted. Oh, maybe it is gone. It's just taking a while. Midway's probably busy this morning. Lots of people doing research at the University of Chicago. There it is, it's gone. Okay, so um, let's transfer this 10 gig file from access to Midway. Again, common use case, but let's go through some of the transfer options that we have available. You can label the transfer, and you'll see why that might be important um, in a minute. We'll label it Greg's 10 gig expert. Um, you can sync if you're doing, um, you could transfer entire directories, and so you can sync directories, and you could only transfer files where the modification times newer file size is different. You know, replication backup tasks, right? You can you can do that with Globus. Uh, delete files on the destination that don't exist on the source. Again, a replication of a directory is very handy for that. Preserves the source file modification time. Who cares when it was transferred? We want to know when it was last touched. Do not verify in file integrity. This shuts off checksumming. So um, maybe you've got a, a situation where you don't want it to take the time to do the checksumming. You can do that. I can optionally encrypt the transfer. Now, in a lot of um, endpoints out there, uh, you, 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 th this will be checked and grayed out because people that are running those endpoints, the institution said nothing comes in and out of these collections unless it's encrypted. So they can force encryption. I'm going to uncheck that for now. You can skip uh, files on errors and quota errors. And you know, I, I, I mentioned when we send our send your files, if uh, there, there was an error, we're going to keep trying. And we're going to keep trying regardless. So this way, if you're tra uh, transferring a bunch of files, you can skip files on with errors. You can skip on quota errors. You know, if you fill up your disk uh, until you get new space, um, that's going that, that, to that's gonna keep failing. And uh, uh, we're going to keep retrying. There's filter rules that you can apply to the transfer. Again, just like the filtering of the um, that you saw when, when when I looked at my when I looked at my collection, um, you can include various matching criteria to transfer only certain files if you're transferring all files in a in a directory. There, are, um, you can disable the notifications. Um, I've you'll receive emails when the notifications are successful, but I'll go ahead and do that because um, I'm watching it live. I don't need to see it in the email. We also have the ability to do time transfers. Um, this is uh, really handy. You know, this is uh, this is data automation, right? Um, and and it's a kind of a basic mechanism of data automation, but but it's one that's like a common use case again for replication for backups. Um, you can schedule a transfer in the future, and you can schedule a transfer that repeats. So um, really handy, um, really handy for uh, doing those types of tasks. So there we go. So all I'm gonna do is label the transfer and turn off the notifications and let's let it rip. So my transfer is off and running and um, there it says transfer successfully submitted. And again, I can, you know, I can log out and log back in. Um, I don't have to babysit that transfer. If I do, uh, you know, I can go back to other collections, um, kind of head on my head on my way here. Let me refresh that. And um, but if I want to jump into my activity and take a look at that, if I've logged out and logged back in, here it is, nice and labeled. So if you're doing a lot of transfers, um, and labeling your transfers really helps um, to get that uh, get that field of visibility uh, when you have to go back into your activity monitor and see what's happening. And indeed, I can jump in and I can see the event log. Uh, I can see that it started and uh, succeeded already. So that was a 10 gig transfer from. Um, Purdue from Anvil and Purdue up to the University of Chicago. And uh, you can see pretty good transfer rate here. And if I go back to my file manager and I refresh here, um, I should see that 10 gig file in place. 
There we go. So successful transfer. Okay, so that's um, a pretty good uh, view of the of a good use case. Oh, I, there's one thing I wanted to touch on here. So the two different transfer types. You'll notice that um, you know I've been using transfer up here. You can see these download and upload um, the ability to do that. Those are because Anvil is set up for HTTPS transfer. So if I want to transfer that timing file with HTTPS, I can just click that download link. It's not using um, it's not using Grid FTP. It's not going to send it to Midway. It's going to send it directly to my laptop. But sometimes people will will log into Globus and select a file and go, well, I can't download. There's nothing I can do. I can't get the file. No, it's just that the um, the administrator of that endpoint has not configured it for HTTPS. So um, you've got to transfer it to another collection of, of your of your own. So, um, and to give an example of that, um, the, the Advanced Leadership Computing Facility at Argonne, um, I've got an allocation there as well. If I click on that, you'll notice the download, upload, and open are grayed out. HTTPS is not enabled there. So if you see those grayed out, you can still move the files with transfer. You just can't transfer, you just can't download them with um, with HTTPS. Okay. Oh, I know one one last thing I wanted to show you is some people, I you know, when I when I'm doing demos, they'll say, Well, you talked about all these connectors. Uh, what is that? Uh, uh, you know what? Uh, what does a Google Drive endpoint or a collection look like? What does a, a um, an Azure Blob storage uh, collection look like? It looks like the same thing. Um, so if I go to my file manager here, and I oh I'm sorry if I go to uh, my bookmarks, I've got my this is my Google Drive. Um, this is this is. You know, Google Drive. If I log in and I uh, do Google Drive with the web interface. Oh, sorry. Uh, and right here, you know, the web interface that I'm commonly used to uh, with Google, and you're probably used to as well, um, that's available here as a Globus collection. So I can transfer files back and forth to my Google Drive to a collection, but it looks just like a collection. Um, you know, it, it, it really kind of uh, takes those disparate storage systems and distills them down to that, that one thing. Okay, there we go. We covered a lot there. Um, but uh, we're going to try one last, we're going to have one last use case here, and that's a uh, Globus sharing. And this is indeed a subscription feature. I'll jump into a discussion of subscriptions um, at the end. And, you know, research is inherently collaborative, right? How do, you, how do you as a researcher share your data, distribute it easily, but make it secure, right? You want to make sure you're sharing with the right, uh, with the right people. Um, so uh, Globus brings you that. So Globus uh, has the ability to, you as the user, you're going to log into our multi-tenant service, just like you did um, um, with a transfer. But you can select a set of files. You can select a directory. And you can share it out with researchers at other institutions, even researchers with your own institution that, that I'm going to do. Um, you can share with you know, collaborators in and out, uh, in and out of your domain. Um, you know, there's no, the one nice thing is there's no data staging, right? It's not like sharing it with a, with a cloud storage system where you got to push it up to the cloud storage system and get it pulled down. Um, very fine grained ass access control. Um, a, you know, you can decide who has access to what, whether it's readability or writeability, and, and we'll see this as, as I do my demo. Also, the storage system admins can enforce some um, compliance policies. And um, if you stay tuned for Lev's presentation, he's going to show you um, how that works at the uh, at the endpoint at the storage gateway level. So let's uh, do our last demo here. Uh, things have gone well so far, and we'll do a little bit of a sharing demo. Hey, Greg, could we just take a little pause here? Because there's quite a few questions in the chat. Sure. Yeah, I can do that. Maybe now would be a good time to uh, review some of the, these questions. So um, let's see which ones we may have not answered. Where would you enforce encryption for all transfers? So that's done at the endpoint level. And um, Lev is going to show you that when he does his admin tutorial. Is there a way to enforce encryption when using GPC? Um, is there a way to enforce? I, you mean you mean using Globus Connect Personal? Um, yeah. I yeah. There's not. I don't think there's a way to enforce that. Maybe Gigi knows. 
We've got other people on the line that are smarter than me with Globus Connect Personal. I don't think there's a way to enforce that. Uh, sorry, I was, I was talking on mute. This is James. There is, if you go to the uh, the uh, endpoints uh, attributes, uh, you can uh, set oh. the GCP endpoint to uh, enforce encryption there. So, so right there. So if I go there, um, sorry, he's quick. <laughs> references. Uh, I'm going to guess it's. Am I going well, the right uh, place? No, uh, no. I, I actually... at, on the overview page. Oh, up, uh, yeah. oh, oh, sorry. So if I go to the uh, file manager and let's let, let's look at my. Um, yeah. Uh, what did I call it? Greg's um, MacBook. Didn't that? It's not what I called. There we go. So I go to Greg's MacBook, and oh, no. you want no, go to go to the to the right. Yeah, it's just when you click on collections, just like oh, a sorry, collection. sorry, sorry, sorry. Yep, it's exactly the same as a server uh, based yeah. collection. Okay. Let's search for that. Ah, if I click on that right arrow right there, that right, yeah. the, the carrot. Okay, there we go. And edit I attributes. can do that. Edit attributes. Yep. There we go. Force encryption. Look at that. Okay. Learn something new every day. Um, is it possible to switch someone's primary identity with a different identity already linked? So this, I'm definitely going to leave to my support staff because they answer this question all the time. Yes, you can absolutely change your primaries and secondary identities. But in order to do that, you have to unlink them first. So you can't just like chain link them on. They There is always one primary and then multiple secondaries. So let's say Greg has his um, U Chicago as his primary, but he wants to put his... XSCI as primary, and it was already linked to his U Chicago. He will then have to unlink it first and then log in with his XSCI and then relink his U Chicago to it. So they need to be unlinked first and then they can be relinked in a different order. So you can change your primary at any time. And you do that via settings in the manage identities. This yes. The garbage can doesn't dispose of your identity. It just unlinks it. Exactly. Uh, are there any other questions before we proceed to the last demo? Please enter them in the chat. All right, I don't see any, so I guess okay. we're going to see the last demo here from Greg. You're uh, giving me the green flag. Okay. So uh, here we go. So I'm actually going to do a creation of a guest collection here. And I'm able to do that because um, the University of Chicago is a Globus subscriber and the admins of, of Midway have set it up. So I do have the ability to um, make my own guest collections. And Lev's certainly going to talk about that in his admin tutorial. But let's say I wanted to, this is my slide share directory. Remember I pushed my slides up um, that I'm going to use today? Uh, I'm going to click on that slide share directory and I'm going to click share. And once I do that, it's going to ask, it's going to say add a guest collection. And I'm going to call my guest collection uh, Greg's uh, GW 2024 slide share. So that's going to be actually a collection that can be searched and discovered. And you'll notice I've set the whole directory here because, um, well, you'll see in a minute. I can add a description and I can add keywords. So when you're searching on any string, it'll get pick up any string in the display name, description, or keywords. Um, look, uh, you can force encryption uh, as a user. Uh, I can I can do that here, but I'm just going to leave that unchecked. It's, it's it's my slides. It's nothing secret. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create that collection. So now I've got that creation, collection created, but I'm, I'm only halfway there. Right? I've got to share with another person. Um, so I'm going to actually add permissions, and I'm going to share with the user. And I'm going to keep the path as the entire directory because um, I'm sharing with Lev. And the, there's a reason I'm sharing with Lev. And um, Lev has many identities here, but I know Lev with his University of Chicago identity. So I'm going to share with his University of Chicago identity, and I'm going to give him write permissions to that share. 
And I'll tell you why in a minute. And I'm going to say, um, I'm going to actually be able to send a message to you. And I'm going to say, uh, Lev, uh, slides here. And when I'm going to add the permissions, Lev's going to get an email. And he's going to be able to uh, actually connect to my share and be able to push slides up. So, um, because I gave him right permissions, and you know, um, you'll saw you saw in this in this um, in my share here that um, wait, lots going on at midway today. That uh, I've got a couple of other th other uh, uh, directories underneath there, and I might want Lev to put something up into that. Uh, you know, the Indiana University director they're going to see here, but um, I'd like him to push his, his slides that he's going to use today up into the uh, GW uh, 2024 directory that's here. Okay, so let's go back to um, that share, and I can discover that here if I go to collections, uh, shareable by me. Um, where did I put that? I call that, here's Matt Craig's 2024 slide share, right? So that's all set. Now, um, let's say I wanted to share, I could also share with another individual, um, but Globus also allows you to create groups and groups are fantastic um, for, for deciding who, who you're gonna let into your shares um, and, and uh, how you're gonna uh, you know, allow access to. So I'm gonna create a group here and we'll call this Greg's uh, GW 2024 slide share. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create that group. Oops, sorry, that searches for the group. Create the new group, uh, Greg's 2024 slide share. And again, I can give it a description and a key name. Uh, I'm sorry, just description here. I can add terms and conditions uh, for joining my group, but I'm just going to uh, name that group. Uh, I'm not going to make it a high assurance group. Again, uh, we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. Um, I'm going to say that users may request to join this group. So any user can request to join the group. I'm going to make it visible to all Globus users. Um, and um, I only want uh, administrators and managers of that group to be able to see the members, but I'm gonna go ahead and create that group. So that group should be publicly visible right now. And if you wanna go ahead and join that group, if I look here at members, um, I'll get notification that other people are, are waiting to, to come in and, and I can grant you membership to the group. Okay, so why would that be handy? Let's go back to uh, my collections and let's go back to shareable by me, and this is my slide share directory, or my, sorry, my slide share guest collection, and let's add another permission. And in this case, I wanna add permissions and I wanna share with a group. And the group I wanna select is my GW 2024, uh, Greg's, okay, I didn't say Globus World, but that's fine, I'm gonna share with that. But I'm only gonna give read access, and I only wanna give read access to that GW 2024 directory and I'm gonna go ahead and add permission, done. So there we go. So now anybody that joins my group and is accepted into my group uh, will be able to access my GW 2024 slide share guest collection and access just the slides for um, my GW 2024 uh, presentations and be able to transfer those to an endpoint um, of their own. Uh, actually, you should be able to download them as well because um, uh, the HTTPS is enabled. So um, let's see, let's just drop back here into groups and see if anybody's uh, asking to join. And if I look into membership, um, no, nope, nobody's, uh, nobody's asking to join, but that's okay. Um, I can also make it make it uh, available generally to um, to others uh, anonymously as well. So um, I can share that way as well. Okay, so um, ah, one other thing uh, with groups as I want to be able to on my let's go back to my collection, um, administered uh, sorry, shareable by me. So I want to go back to oops, sorry, shareable by me. There's my slide share uh, guest collection, I wanna grant a role. And what a role does, it allows you to give the ability to do um, other things, and you'll see what that is, to other people. And I'm gonna assign a role, and I'm gonna wanna assign a role to um, my friend Lev, because I want Lev to be able to uh, maintain this group, or maintain this guest collection. 
And where did I use this? Use Chicago identity. And I am actually going to make him an access manager. So Lev now can control access um, to my guest collection. And I'm going to add a role for him. So now Lev uh, can actually invite others and um, grant others access to that guest collection. I can even do that on the group. So if I go back to my group and, um, you know, I don't want to say, oh, here we got two, two pending membership. Um, thanks for Thanks for doing that. Oh, there we go. And here's my waiting. Um, uh, James and Gigi, thanks. So I can now go in and, and make Gigi a member. So I can add her as a member to my group. And she can go down and grab that slide. And James, I'm going to make him um, a member as well. So now they're both members of my groups. And uh, if we drop in here. Um, oh, and Bruce joined as well. I made Bruce. So, oh, uh, sorry, Bruce is waiting. Uh, I can make Bruce a, a member as well, but I won't go through this all, but I, and I'll show you why. So I, they're now active members of my group, but you can see, I don't want to have to maintain this group by myself. So in the settings, um, I can grant a role to others. Oh, sorry. In the overview, um, I, I, I can grant roles to others on my group so I can have others uh, be able to, uh, to uh, manage my group for me. So I think that's in settings. Uh, where's my... Roles things things tend to move around the web browser. So uh, in the web interface, you can you can add the ability to um, add roles to your groups as well. So if you don't want to be the sole administrator of your group, um, you can. Oh, I know why because they have to be members. Um, so uh, Gigi, I'm going to make Gigi a. Um, let's see, let's modify her membership. There we go. Uh, I'm going to make Gigi a manager of my group. And now Gigi can do all the approving of my group. And if you join my group, you'll be able to access my guest collection and uh, access my slides from today. And maybe even Lev pushed his slides up there. So maybe his slides are available to you. So you can see um, Globus a uh, really handy tool for collaboration. Okay, um, we'll bring it home and then we'll, uh, hopefully we'll have a couple of minutes left over for questions. Let's talk a little bit about Globus subscriptions. Um, by So what's a Globus subscription? You're, there's, it's, you're subscribed at the institutional level. So we don't, have in, we don't have individual level subscriptions. It's all at the institution. Your university may subscribe. And um, by having a, a, a role in a subscription management group, and I'll show you what this is in a minute, and, um, and by subscribing your resources, by making your resource, by marking it as part of a subscription, and a resource could include your Globus Connect personal endpoint, your Globus Connect server endpoint. By subscribing it, you can do additional things with those resources. You can, do, you can enable guest collections. You can even do that on Globus Connect personal if it's a subscribe resource. Uh, you can access the premium connectors. There's additional charges for the, the, the premium connectors, but you do need a subscription. It allows you uh, administrator oversight to your endpoints. You can um, bring your endpoints into the Globus console. It gives you kind of an overview look. Uh, there's monthly usage reports for any subscribed resource. Um, the ability to, uh, to subscribe more than one flow. I'll talk a little bit about flows at the last presentation. You can enable HTTPS access on your endpoints and collections. Um, and it allows you with our subscriptions, we've got other levels um, that I'll talk uh, about at the very end here and um, and more. You can find out more about um, subscriptions uh, on our website. Greg, sorry to interrupt, but most sure. important. How do people know whether their institution has ah, a subscription? Why, I'm glad you asked. So um, we didn't even plan that. So how, do you, uh, how can you find out if you have a subscription? If you come down here to settings and you go to subscriptions, you can see that um, there's a couple Globus subscriptions that I'm an administrator of. So I can see that there's a subscriptions there and I'm I, a member of, um, and I can see those subscriptions. but if I have nothing here, or if I want to find another subscription, um, I can type in um, the University of Chicago. And sure enough, there's three or, or boy, there's a couple other subscriptions uh, out there. So, oh, because it takes it as it's looking at every string there. Let's, uh, Take it down to University of Chicago. There we go. So the University of Chicago actually has several subscriptions under them as a subscriber. Um, and let's say 
Uh, I wanted to, um, I don't have a high assurance endpoint. I just got my own collections, but I could click on this and I could join that subscription. And this looks just like groups, right? It allows me to, um, uh, it's sending a message to the managers of that subscription group saying, please allow me in. Once I'm a member of the subscription, I would then see that subscription in the, um, in my settings here. And uh, I could manage resources. I could subscribe resources under that subscription to do those kind of extra, extra uh, globus things that you can do with subscribe resources. Okay, the last thing I'll talk about is globus security and the globus security core security features. So um, you saw with access control, you know, the identities are managed by you at the institutional level. We are not the identity provider. You don't go out and get a Globus uh, account. You can use your identity to log into Globus. Um, data stays at the institution, right? You, you, we don't absorb your data. We don't see your data. Um, it goes directly between your, your collections. Um, integrity checks with transferred data. What you see is what you get, you know? So we make sure that file is as, as, uh, the integrity is there. High availability and redundancy. Um, the, the Globus service runs in um, uh, the multiple exclusion zones in the, in the AWS cloud. And uh, so it's, it's very accessible, you know, very redundant and, and available. Um, and also you saw the ability to force encryption and uh, any, any encryption, uh, any data fi files you could encrypt and any control channel, anything we store as Globus is always encrypted. We do have other levels of subscriptions. I mentioned the high assurance subscription and the BAA level subscription, and that's just for restricted data handling. So if you um, are a data scientist and you're uh, managing uh, PHI data, PII data, CUI data, um, data that needs an extra level of, of security, our high assurance, uh, you, you need to meet those NIST standards, our high assurance and our BAA level allow you to do that. The high assurance and BA level mechanically and, and, and functionally are exactly the same, but the BA level subscription um, brings in that little piece of paper, um, a BAA. And if you're a, a manager of, of PHI uh, health data, uh, you'll know what a BAA means. Okay, um, like the, the, the features that come in the box with high assurance, additional authentication assurance, you saw that whole linked identity scheme um, and, and the ability for me to kind of bounce back and forth between collections um, without needing to authenticate uh, with a high assurance uh, endpoint or high assurance collection, it says, um, yeah, sorry, uh, I know you've got that linked identity there, but I need you to authenticate specifically to me with your identity. And of, of course, it does the, the session timeouts and, and the authentication timeouts as well. Um, any data that goes in and out of a high assurance endpoint is enforced, uh, encryption is enforced. You can't even turn it on or off as an administrator. And then there's additional audit logging again, to meet those NIST standards. So the bottom line is, um, you know, and this holds true for the standard version of Clovis, the, the high assurance and the BA level, um, you know, as you're sharing collaboration, file transfer, um, and, and security, privacy, and compliance, you know, with, with Globus, it's not a trade-off you need to make. A uh, very secure uh, method for, for transferring files here. I'm going to leave you with uh, a couple of support resources. Um, obviously, documentation is always the best place to start. We do have a YouTube channel, so a lot of videos available on our YouTube channel. Um, support at Globus.org, our wonderful support people. You've seen um, them answer.